Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Thursday Yonko back here with another video, and this is going to be my last video in relation to the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef. But this time, I'm going to be talking about the Drake perspective in his NBA comp, that being LeBron James of the LA Lakers. Now, I made a video a while back talking about how LeBron James could possibly be the GOAT, but I also said if you have Michael Jordan as the GOAT, I have no problem with that. You can say it's Bill Russell, you can say it's Wilt. Kareem, Magic, Larry, you could say it's LeBron, but he's in that conversation as being the GOAT because he has the stats, he has the longevity, and he keeps going and keeps proving people wrong. He has the records, okay? Drake is the same way. Drake has the longevity, he has the numbers, he has the accolades. You feel me? He's been the face of hip-hop as LeBron James have, has been the face of the NBA these guys have carried their communities the NBA community the hip-hop community you feel me everything surrounds LeBron James whether we like it or not you feel me whether we want it or not everything surrounds Drake whether we like it or not these guys are the supernovas you know these guys put asses in seats these guys are important to the economy of the nba and hip-hop and one day these guys are going to be gone we don't have to say that they are the goat but they're in that conversation and you can say that lebron cheated the game you can say that drake cheated the game ghost riders building super teams that's why these guys are each other's comp you feel me? They're still great, but they've had missteps along the way to their greatness. And we get that and we understand that. But guess what? At the end of the day, they're still great. And they are the guys that we love to hate. You feel me? I criticize Drake. I criticize LeBron. Things that LeBron does gets underneath my skin and gets on my nerve. The things that Drake does gets on my nerve also. But it's like deep down, everybody understands that we're going to miss these guys when they're gone. You feel me? They're going to have the numbers, stats, accolades, everything to say that they held it down for a long period of time. Hall of Famers. You feel me? And they have a bunch of people that love them and a bunch of people that hate them. You know what I mean? So I want to give my flowers to not only Kendrick Lamar, Kawhi Leonard also, but LeBron James and Drake. Because without these guys, I wouldn't be able to make this comparison, make these videos. Whether if you agree with it or not, I've already driven the similarities and everything like that. You can go argue with a brick wall. But basically, this entire situation... You know, I think that Drake lost from the perspective of propaganda. I do not think that he was outwrapped. You know, you have a lot of people, they got their panties in a bunch when the Family Matters breakdown happened because deep down, everybody knew what they were listening to. People had to pretend that they hated it, that it was garbage, it was ass, it was this and that to, you know, go along to get along, go along with the popular opinion and, you know, they said it didn't need a two-hour breakdown. They are trying to tear down What's the Dirt's channel because he just made a video. You feel me? That's what happens when you not necessarily even side with Drake, but when you bring him up. It's very polarizing. Same thing with LeBron. Very polarizing. You know? It's just more people love them in real life it's only on the internet that you see a lot of hate projected towards these guys in real life everyone loves them they're gonna buy the album they're gonna go to the games they love these guys you know they're gonna cry when they're gone you feel me they may be like we're tired of lebron i'm tired of lebron you feel me i want him to go sit his ass down but will i not miss lebron at some point yes i will Drake is getting older. Why do I not want Drake to just 
make one great album and ride off into the sunset? Yes, I do. But will I miss these guys? Absolutely. That's what this video is about. Drake is the LeBron James of hip hop. You feel me? He doesn't have to be the GOAT, but he's damn near. You feel me? If you have him as the GOAT, there's a great argument for it. You feel me? And, you know, I just appreciate all these guys while they're still here. I don't want to take anything for granted because it just felt kind of weird to see this entire situation as a fan of both artists, all three artists, that including J. Cole. Um, you grow up listening to these guys. I've been listening to Drake <sighs> since I was in middle school. <laughs> I've been listening to Drake since I was middle school in middle school. You feel me? And, you know, I grew up listening to all these guys. And it's like to have an entire community try to take away every single memory that you have of this person and try to flip it into something negative. Like I didn't see Drake come up. From him looking like a hamster with, you know, a low cut and it's like no beard. Like it's like it had the five o'clock shadow, you know, baby face from him, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> him changing his hairstyles to the Caesar and all this stuff. Now you got the braids like it's I watched Drake grow up into an old nigga. You feel me? Like <laughs> that's what happened. And I grew up and became a grown ass man you feel me so i just didn't appreciate and i still don't appreciate how you guys disrespect the legacy of not only him but young money as well because i'm truly somebody who appreciates the culture i don't just use that as a buzzword the culture this the culture that you got a lot of nerd ass niggas who ain't never stepped foot outside talking about culture they don't know what it means to be cultured you feel me they don't even understand the first thing about culture they don't understand where they come from or know where they come from, where their bloodline originates from. Me, I'm half Ghanaian. My father comes from there. I know about my heritage. I know about my culture on both sides. My mother, you feel me? That side comes from the Fusky Islands, runaway slaves. You feel me? That's where my bloodline comes from. I understand my culture. I understand where I come from. You niggas do not. Stop using that word. You don't understand it. So you cannot tell another person where they come from and what they lack. You feel me? A lot of people get on the internet and just run their mouth. You feel me? So listen, man, I hope that Drake can somehow bounce back from this. And when I say bounce back, I'm not saying that Drake has fallen off because he's still the top rapper. The numbers say so. Everybody still listen to him. I'm talking about from the standpoint of just go ahead and make a great album. Focus on that. You feel me? Don't focus on round two. Don't focus on anything Kendrick Lamar related. You gave him the stimmy. Let him rot. You feel me? Let him take it over. If his music is good to keep him relevant. Cool. But no more engaging in and giving niggas clout that they otherwise can't provide for themselves. People say. Well, how come the steamy come work for Drake? Because Drake is still at the top. You feel me? You would have to fall off in order for a steamy to work. A nigga who the steamy is coming from cannot use the steamy on himself if, in general, it just doesn't work that way. But still, if a nigga is still at the top, it has not fallen off, then it's like, what are we talking about? You know, that's that's just what it is. And this video is more so about you guys trying to rob people of legacy. It's clear that something happened behind the scenes with Drake, his label, Jay-Z, all this stuff. I have a theory, right? I feel like Drake was a puppet at some point. I feel like he was used in a certain way like all the rest of these industry guys are and i can't say too much because it's youtube but i'll say this i feel like drake was a puppet at one point and drake got so big so big to the point that he no longer had to be the puppet and he cut the strings and the people that were operating the strings you feel me they they tried to put the strings back on and drake said no 
because Drake is big enough. Drake is not going anywhere. I don't think Drake has to play the game anymore. You feel me? I do think a certain artist from Compton who has not been all that relevant throughout the 2020s, I do think that he's still on that puppet string and I can't blame him. I can't blame him. You feel me? You got to you got to get it how you live. You feel me? If this is the way that you want things to go with your career, you unfortunately attach your relevancy to the biggest artist in the game. And once this beef simmers down, if the music ain't good enough, you'll fall back to the wayside. So that's the unfortunate aspect of this entire beef is that you don't want to see some of your favorite artists go away. And I want Kendrick Lamar to stay relevant, but I didn't want him to use Drake in order to do it. I wanted it to be cut it to be because he was a great artist because he was dropping good music. Not because he dropped it some trash ass meet the grams. Like let's stop. So Drake, he's gonna be around. Whether if y'all like it or not, you can call him the GOAT. You can say that he's not the GOAT. It's up to your discretion. But I won't be bullied into believing anything otherwise because I grew up listening to these guys. You feel me? At no point have I ever seen Drake as anything other than a black man and part of the culture. You feel me? Like you grew up watching him at every single step like all of us did. I don't care what the Internet says. The Internet is trying to revive revisionist history. You feel me? Drake running to Atlanta. He's richer than all these niggas. You feel me? Oh, nigga, go get your OVO chain. I guess I need to. You feel me? Because the damn sure ain't going to be no PG Lang t- uh, chain. Like, let's keep it real. You feel me? I have no reason to side with one or the other. All I can do is tell the truth. All I can do is go based on my experience. I grew up listening to Drake. I grew up listening to Kendrick Lamar. I grew up listening to J. Cole. And at no point was it like you had to be a fan of one or the other. Sure, you might have loved one person more than the other, but at the same time, you loved them all. And social media and all these white people that didn't listen to all of them, like they inject themselves into this quote unquote beef. And they tell you, you got to pick a side. They tell you that, you know, it's either one or the other. These guys are behind the hip hop accounts and all this stuff trying to push propaganda. You feel me? Like everything is about, oh, it's this against that. It's that against this. But in reality, you just love. You just love all the artists. You love the music that they put out. And when they put out trash, you criticize as trash. You feel me? It's not this, oh, you have to be intelligent to understand this and that. Only dumb people want to feel smart by listening to music. You feel me? There's room for interpretation with any bars as long as the person is rapping. There's room for interpretation with R&B, with rock, soul, rap, everything. You feel me? It's not just uh, exclusive to one person because you see him as a deity. You feel me? Whether that's Drake or Kendrick Lamar. You do not worship another man. You only worship God. And that's pretty much all I got to say. I hope I taught you guys a lesson. That's all I got to say about the beef. Kendrick Lamar, Drake, two of the legends in the game. I love them both. I will continue to listen to both of them. I ain't listening to none of Kendrick Lamar new shit unless it's from the next album. Like, I'm... I'm and to me, I had to actually go back and listen to her loss because I actually enjoyed some of the songs off of it. And it's clear that Privilege, Privilege Rappers was about Kendrick. And I love the hook off that song. It is hard in context, right? But listen, you guys won't bully me. I don't care. It's on to the NBA season. Peace.